Swinburne University of Technology. In this video we're going to be thinking about how we define a research problem and then how we write research questions. It's really important that any time we are doing any kind of research we don't jump straight into writing survey questions and designing the survey but we really think closely about the problem. What is it that we actually want to find out in a broad sense and then under that what are the key components of this thing that we're trying to find out. So to do this properly we really need to take some time and uh, think about the problem, think about uh, how different facets of it uh, and generally look at a little bit of secondary data, look at other research, look at literature, uh, find out what other people have written on the subject. So we really have a very clear idea of what we want to find out when we start writing our survey. So if we have a look at an example, uh, back in the early 1980s, uh, Coca-Cola did some market research and they did a whole lot of blind taste tests. And so they lined up some blank cups and they uh, had Pepsi and Coke and some other, other di uh, different uh, colas. And they found that people were preferring the sweeter products ahead of Coke. And so they designed a new Coke, which they weren't very original, they called New Coke and they decided that they would uh, try and have that to replace Coke. So not as well as but instead of. Uh, and this was a bit of a disaster, people didn't like New Coke and uh, they pretty quickly went back to the original. So what went wrong? The issue was that they only thought about taste and really the taste of the drink is only one facet of why someone would be buying coca-cola ahead of another soft drink and so if they had defined their if they would thought a little bit more closely about the broad problem which was uh, why do people drink coke and I guess kind of secondary to that how can we get more people drinking coke uh, they would have uh, hopefully then thought about more different elements that might make that up. So things like their brand and their marketing, uh, things like the availability, uh, people's habits that they have, their association and connection that they have to the brand. There's a whole lot of different reasons why people might be buying Coke and it's not necessarily just taste. So when they did the blind taste tests, uh, and for a lot of trials you will you will blind people so you will take all the logos off so they are only telling you about taste and that's very important but it wasn't the only factor that they should have considered. So what we want to do when we're defining our problem we start with a very a very broad problem uh, so don't narrow it down too much and then set up a series of research questions which are the things we want to find out about that take in all of the relevant factors. So our broad f uh, problem might be what factors influence coke consumption. So this is the big picture thing that we're trying to learn. Then under this we'll come up with some research questions. So does taste influence coke consumption? Do as does advertising influence drink preferences? What demographics predict drink purchasing behavior? Each of these is not the actual question that will go in our survey but it's the big picture topic and you can imagine under that uh, if we want to find out about taste we might do some blind taste tests. If we wanted to find out about advertising we might show people different uh, uh, forms of advertising and also ask them about their uh, drink preferences. If we want to find out about the relationship between demographics and purchasing behavior we're going to have to ask a series of questions about demographics, find out things like age and gender and whether they are single or married or have children, all the different things we think might relate uh, to their purchasing behaviour. And then we'll also find out about their purchasing behaviour. So we'll ask uh, questions about what was the most recent drink that they purchased, how often did they purchase different drinks, all the different things that we want to find out to characterise their behaviour. Uh, the other thing that we'll often do once we've formulated our research questions is we'll also write what we call hypotheses. 
So hypotheses is where we actually are kind of coming up with a prediction of what we think uh, we're going to find out from these research questions. And so these are what we would then use our statistics to test. So we might hypothesize that people who prefer sweeter drinks tend to prefer Coke, or younger people tend to prefer Coke. So you'll see that I underlined the words tend to, and later on when we're looking at correlations and some of our other statistics, uh, we'll see me referring to this phrase again. And this is really to emphasize that any time we're answering these questions, we're not we're not making these absolutes. We're not saying that all young people like Coke, but we might find that there is there is a pattern. And so when we're looking kind of on average, um, younger people are more likely to prefer Coke. So we'll come back to that a little bit later in the course when we start looking at statistics. So let's just think about a, another example. So let's suppose we're an airline and we think about our broad problem. And so the broad problem from the management perspective might be how do we attract more loyal customers? Uh, but then we might want to translate this into more of a market research broad problem. We might say, well, let's identify factors that will influence passenger loyalty. Because if we can find out that, if we know what the factors are, then that's going to help us to try and answer how do we go about attracting more. So there's kind of two steps to this one. So what we need to do is we need to think about some research questions. We've got this broad problem about factors that influence passenger loyalty. And so what we would do is we would need to uh, probably do some exploratory research. Uh, if we work in the uh, airline industry ourselves, then we can apply our own knowledge of the area. Uh, but perhaps we're consultants who have come in so we may start off, we may just do a few little focus groups with people, ask them what they think, um, just to really get a gauge of what our research question should be. Uh, we might be looking at theory or literature, uh, might be looking at empirical evidence. So empirical evidence just means data-based evidence uh, and come up with some different areas that we could write research questions. So you can see I've got some there, safety, ticket price, scheduling, uh, frequent flyer program, brand name. So there's probably a whole lot more as well. So we've kind of bullet pointed got the list of these different topics. From there we could write some research questions about them. And then we could come up with some hypotheses. And once we've got our research questions and our hypotheses, then we'll start thinking about how do we turn this into questions in our survey. So the next step that we would be going on to is, well, what data do we need? Should it be qualitative? Should it be quantitative? Should it be a combination of both? How do we go about getting it? Are we going to be doing surveys? Are we going to be doing interviews? Are we going to be using the web? Maybe it's web surveys, phone surveys, face-to-face. -face. Um, so really, once we've got our research questions, this is kind of detailing our next step what data do we need to collect and we can once we've answered that we can start writing our survey questions how are we going to get it this has been a swinburne production